Hey everybody, welcome back. I work with a bunch of handy people who really know their way around a shop. Any shop. Woodworking, metalworking, mechanics. There's a 3D lab full of people who love to show off their 3D printing. More to come on that in a later video. As I'm known in the office as the wood guy, I'm usually sitting at my desk minding my own business and a coworker walks up and says, Hey Pete, can you make this? I take a look at their phone and give my two cents as to how and more importantly how much this wooden whatever will cost to make out of real nice wood and some peat sweat. This group I work with has really good taste so I hesitate to say no when they ask if I can do something. So usually I give them a yes eh, even if I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do it. This really isn't one of those videos where I'm going to show a new technique or show off a new expensive tool. This is a straightforward build for a friend who needed a simple stand for a knife. One of this creative bunch was awarded a ceremonial K-bar for military service some years back. They had the knife stored away, as military people do, being a humble group, not wanting to brag about past port visits, heroic deeds done, or missions accomplished. This K-Bar, although considered a ceremonial piece, is still a pretty deadly looking weapon, and I'm certain it'll be given lots of second looks by the office folks. For this build, I'm using some offcuts of white oak I had laying around. I really like the cool grain and the detail of the wood, how it shows off after it's been finished. This build has two basic parts, the base and the holder, stand thing. Let's call it a stand for now these scraps and from the looks of them I do mean scraps the longer piece was screwed to my workbench acting as a stop for my attempts at planing material I have one plane I think it's a Harbor Freight Wonder it gets the job done but it's finicky With that all glued up, I'm going to cut it down to shape. I'm thinking an inch and three eighths by an inch and five eighths. Let's, let's see how that works out. With the blank milled up, I'm marking out the rough area I want to route out. With my calibrated eye and years of experience, I can skillfully draw out my plan. Looks good, right? I thought about how I was going to hold this thing down, and I just winged it. I don't have an elaborate hold down table or some cool hidden vice in my workbench. But what I do have are screws, so I went with this idea. This router jig is a basic plate add-on to do mortising. I built this originally to help mortise a fence post. This is kind of like a long mortise, right? Or maybe like a curved bottom dado? Maybe? I sprang for a fancy router bit set for bowl making. It came with a two-piece flat bottom and this curved bottom pattern cutting profile bit thing. The curved one looked pretty good in test cuts, so I chose that one. Working on this small piece of stock of material probably wasn't the best idea, but 
I made do with my exemplary router skills. I took small bites and with the play in the guide I was able to take multiple passes sneaking up on the final shape. <laughs> not really. In reality I was worried that this router was going to catch the wood and launch it into low earth orbit or the router was going to sense my fear and decide to eat my hand. Dealing with these two real possibilities, I held on to that router as if my life depended on it. One of my least favorite parts of having a one and a quarter car garage is not having permanent tool access to mount stuff, like, you know, walls and things like that. My camera saw an opportunity to deal me a crippling blow and not record my epic OG routing of the base. Too bad, it was pretty awesome. My camera saw the perfect opportunity to deal me a crippling blow by not recording my epic routing of the base. Speaking of the base, I had a perfect 3 inch by 13 inch white oak chunk left over that was the perfect size. I didn't even have to cut it. I don't care what the internet says, more shooting angles equals more fun. Now that we have a moment to talk, I want to speak for a moment about the bane of woodworking. Dust. I have a vacuum, I have a Harbor Freight dust collector, and I have that new hip RZ mask that all the kids have been using, and I'm still covered in dust. My neighbors give me dirty looks all the time when I walk out of the garage and dust myself off. I watch the dust slowly waft off me and onto their expensive cars. Some people just don't appreciate handcrafted gifts. After the 220 grit sanding with the orbital, I took the time to give the piece a bath and wipe it down to clean the dust off. 
This also gave me a chance to feel the raised grain and see how much finished sanding I'd need. I just had to give it a light 400 grit sanding to take off the tiny bumps and give the wood a softer hand feel. Once the K-bar is on display, I'm sure people will try and pick it up. I only want people to comment on how sharp the knife is, but not the wood. Those of you who are still watching the video may note that there is a small squarish hole in the holder part. This is for the tang of the knife to be recessed into and have the proper angle for display. Another temper tantrum of my camera and my limited patience resulted in a partially unfocused video of me doing chisel work. I'll take the blame this time. See what I say about that stain? That really brings out that grain. The stain I'm using is Minwax Espresso. I thought it was a pretty nice brown color that paired well with the white oak. Here's a couple of glamour shots I took on the kitchen table. That knife is mine, and the next one right here, that's my friend's. I thought both displays came out pretty nice. Eh, I might spray a clear coat on it. Maybe. Thanks for watching.